Almost two years ago, I made a video covering Beacon, an eddy current sensor that gives you precise, high-speed scans of your printer's build surface. Since then, we've seen the release of a handful of other eddy current sensors, and even a few retail printers start to ship with them. One that I was really excited about is the Big Tree Tech Eddy, largely because its form factor mirrored the common Omron probes already used in many tool heads, so it wouldn't require any redesigning to make it fit. At launch, I live streamed the installation and setup into my Cyborg Enderwire, and shortly after discovered a drawback. With Beacon, once I set it up and figured out my Z offset, it's largely been fire and forget thanks to its built-in thermal compensation. With Eddy, I noticed variations in my first layer caused by thermal drift. Now, there is a way to calibrate this by doing a paper test at various temps, but at that time, the documentation was sparse and the process just felt tedious. So the printer really didn't see that much action. Fast forward, and thanks to the growing popularity of Eddy current sensors and the community, Eddy NG has since been released. This add-on for Clipper solves the thermal drift issue by using the nozzle to tap the build plate when it's at temp. This is used along with what the sensor reads to generate an accurate Z offset for each print. In today's video, we'll dive into Eddy NG, talk a bit more about the add-on, and go through the process of getting it up and running on your printer. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Before diving in, I want to give credit where credit's due. Beacon is an incredible piece of hardware, and as far as I'm aware, the implementation of using an eddy current sensor with nozzle tapping came from Beacon Contact. I'm running Beacon in three of my printers and have yet to find an alternative that can truly go toe to toe with it. That being said, whether your decision to go with an alternative is based on price or perhaps a feature like CAN bus communication, I have always been a fan of having options. Today's video is brought to you by MicroSwiss. Based in the US, MicroSwiss manufactures high quality 3D printer upgrades, including extruders, hot ends, and nozzles for over 150 different models. I've been running their hardware in my machines for over six years and have always been impressed by their meticulous attention to detail. Their newest line of drop-in hot ends called Flowtech features high flow and its leak proof design allows for cold nozzle swapping. Flowtech is constantly expanding, and they recently added a version for the Bamboo Lab X1 and P1 series of printers. From plated brass and hardened steel CM2 to CHT and Diamondback, they have nozzles available for any application. Links are in the description to find out more about the various upgrades they offer or to pick up your own. We're using Big Tree Tech's Eddy probe for this specific install, but Eddy NG is not just for this specific probe. In the GitHub repo, you'll also find instructions for Cartographer and the Mellowfly probes. There's also mention of potential compatibility with additional probes, but that they would require modifying things in code as well as your config files. While there's definitely some crossover between how to set up these three different probes, each of them also has some unique elements. Because of this, my recommendation is to watch the video to gain some familiarity, but also to read the wiki for your specific probe before you start to make sure that you're configuring it correctly. Before starting, there's two things you'll want to do. The first is to remove any config settings that you have in place for your probe if you were running it prior to installing Eddy NG. The documentation says you don't have to remove your MCU ID section, but for the sake of just having a clean slate, I deleted anything related to Eddy. The second is to update your Clipper firmware. It's probably been a year since I've updated this printer, and so I tried using Kaya to just update the Clipper version, ran into some issues, and ended up having to uninstall Clipper and then reinstall in order for me to get on the latest version of vanilla or mainline Clipper. For anyone running Calico, formerly known as Danger Clipper, I recommend updating as well. Just a heads up, there is a few different instructions if you're installing on Calico versus using mainline Clipper. Next, we need to clone the Eddy NG repository and run the installation script. Start by SSHing into your Clipper host. Then enter the command to clone the GitHub repository. Once this completes, type cd space tilde forward slash eddy dash ng to move to that directory. Then type 
dot forward slash install dot sh to install eddyng. With that now installed, we need to compile Clipper and flash it over to our big tree tech Eddy. Before doing this, we need to put Eddy into DFU mode. The process for doing this is to hold down the button on top of Eddy and then plug its USB cable into a Pi or Pi equivalent. On the Stealth Burner toolhead, this was a little awkward. I had to remove the front cover, the hot end assembly, and then use an Allen key to press down on the boot button. Back in your console, if you type LS USB, you should see a device labeled as Raspberry Pi RP2 boot. This lets you know that Eddy has been successfully placed into DFU mode. And if you don't see it, try one more time unplugging it, holding down the boot button, and then plugging it in before releasing. Once confirmed, CD into your Clipper directory and type make space menu config. Use the settings listed on screen to compile your firmware. But remember, this is specific to Eddy and the USB version of this probe. So settings will be different if you're running the I2C variant. With the settings configured, hit Q to exit and select yes to save. Then type make to compile your firmware. Make sure you're still in the Clipper directory and enter the command to flash the firmware to your Eddy probe. In my case, the device ID from the LSUSB command matched with BigTree Tech's instructions. But if your ID ends up being different, change it in the make flash command. If all goes well, your flash will be successful. And entering ls space forward slash dev forward slash serial forward slash buy dash ID forward slash asterisk will list your device's MCU serial ID. Either leave your console window open or copy and paste this to a separate text document so that we can use it in just a moment. Next, we need to copy the config section from the Ender ng GitHub over to our printer.cfg file. The first thing we need to replace is the serial ID with the one we got just a moment ago. In addition to this, we also need to enter our probe's X and Y offsets. This is the distance that our probe is mounted away from our nozzle. For the stealth burner, this was an offset of zero in X and 20 in Y. I already had a bed mesh section set up in my printer, but at the very least, you'll want to make sure you have that configured. Based on my experience with Eddy NG during the Tic Tac printer build stream with Steve Builds, along with this install, the height distance from probe to nozzle seems to have a more specific requirement to it. For the Big Tree Tech Eddy, the recommendation is to have the coil mounted 2.95 millimeters above the tip of the nozzle. Subtracting the 1.2 millimeter thick shell of the case, the distance is right around 1.75 millimeters. I adjusted my probe to be right around this distance and had the initial calibration fail but a slight bump up passed and it's been working well since. So if you do happen to have issues with the calibration process, play around with the height of your probe. The calibration process itself is pretty simple. Enter the probe eddy ng status command into your clipper console. This seems to always display a zero frequency value for me the first time I enter it, so try entering it a few different times. What you should see is something similar to what's on screen with a last coil status and status saying not calibrated. Next, enter G28XY into the console to home your X and Y axes. Then heat your bed to 50 or 60 Celsius and then manually jog your tool head over to the center of your bed. Next, input the probe eddy ng setup command to run the setup process. This pops up a window where you'll jog your tool head down and perform a paper test. For anyone not familiar with this process, grab a small piece of printer paper and move it back and forth under your tool head as you jog it down. Once you've made contact and can no longer move the piece of paper, make small adjustments up or down until you can feel the nozzle on the piece of paper, but you're still able to freely move it. The Eddy NG instructions specifically state this doesn't have to be super accurate, so get it within range and then hit accept. When you do, the process will try to find working parameters for your probe. If it's successful, you'll get a confirmation message in your console or an error message if it fails. If it happens to fail, it should tell you what the issue is in that error message so that you can try to address it. Now we're ready to try homing our printer. Make sure to have your mouse over the emergency stop button in Clipper if you notice something going wrong, like the tool head not stopping. 
Enter G28Z to home the machine. And if all goes well, you'll have a successful home. Another recommendation is to use the probe Eddie NG probe static command. This can be entered into your console at any time to get a Z height reading from your probe. I move my tool head from five millimeters to four millimeters to three millimeters and then two millimeters entering this command each time. The one to three millimeter height range is supposed to be the most accurate. And I found the reported value to be 0.03 to 0.05 millimeters off roughly. This has worked well for me, but if your reported values are way off, try running through the Eddie NG setup process one more time. The last thing to check is that tap is working. Enter the probe Eddie NG tap command into the console to probe with your nozzle. If you happen to get an error here, you'll need to check the troubleshooting section of the documentation. If successful, move your tool head down to Z0 and grab a piece of paper to see what the gap feels like between your nozzle and the bed. If you can move the paper and feel the nozzle without too much friction, then your settings are fine. But in my case, the nozzle was too close to the bed. Using the probe Eddy NG set tap adjust Z value command, you can set a Z offset and then run the tap command again, repeating the process with different values until you find the sweet spot. As long as you set up a bed mesh in your config file, run bed mesh calibrate method equals rapid scan to perform a scan of your build plate. As long as this works correctly, save your config and restart your firmware. You've now got your Eddy Current Probe set up with Eddy NG and TAP. Really all that's left is to make a few adjustments to your print start macro. There's a recommended flow in the documentation, but the key takeaways are heat your hot end to 150 Celsius, so any filament on the tip of the nozzle softens. Add the probe eddy ng tap command, and set your bed mesh calibration to rapid scan if you plan on meshing before each print. I'll have my current print start macro on screen as reference for what's been working well for me but I still might tweak a few things. With this setup, I get a super accurate Z offset before each print, a detailed mesh, and I am much happier using my printer. While this process might seem involved the way it's all laid out in this video, I promise you it is really not that bad. And as long as you have some familiarity with Clipper and you read through the documentation in the GitHub repository, you can absolutely get this set up and running on your printer as well. And that's been Eddie NG. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you have a better understanding of what this Clipper add-on is, what the setup process is like, and whether this is something you want to do on your own printer. If you have any additional questions, let me know in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video just about every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you want to support the channel further, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Deanna from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.